It is my mission to bring fine dining to everyone who wants to experience it. The only things you will need are a couple of ingredients and enough courage to get your hands dirty. Because the truth is, you do not need tons of cash to experience an exquisite meal at home. Today we are recreating Hell's Kitchen baked mac and cheese with smoked gouda and crispy prosciutto. The question is, can we recreate a luxurious meal in the comfort of our own homes? The correct answer is yes, and here is how. Step one, prep your garnish. Let's slice some fresh chives. Next, I am going to crispy up some thinly sliced prosciutto. I pop these into a preheated 375 degree oven for about five to seven minutes or until they are beautifully crisp. Give those some time to cool and crumble those up with a knife. Once my toppings are prepped, let's bring some water to a boil. You may have heard that a watched pot never boils, and it's true. So let's take our eyes off that pot and distract ourselves with something else by making the cheese sauce. Most cheeses tend to separate when they are heated to a certain temperature. This causes the cheese to get stringy as well as greasy, which is not an ideal texture for mac and cheese. To prevent this separation from happening, some people might use a roux to keep their sauces stable. However, I have messed up enough roux to know that they are not very beginner friendly and they are also not 100% necessary. My favorite way to stabilize a cheese sauce is to use unsweetened evaporated milk. Be careful and make sure that you are buying the unsweetened kind. We are going to put that into a pot, crank the heat up to high and bring that to a boil. To avoid scorching, do not walk away from the pot as it comes up to temperature. Once that comes to a boil, I am going to turn my heat off and stir in the cheese. I have a mixture of sharp white cheddar, smoked gouda, and gruyere, which is just an awesome combination of cheeses. Exact amounts will be in the description below. Reserve about one and a half cups of your cheese for the baking at the end. Stir that in and then generously season with salt and pepper to taste. Once the water comes up to a boil, let's cook our pasta noodles. I have one pound of cavatappi noodles going into some well-salted boiling water. The biggest mistake people tend to make is not salting the pasta water enough. You want several big heaping tablespoons of salt, and as the saying goes, your pasta water should taste salty like the sea. You can use any kind of pasta cut you would like. For example, you could use shells, elbows, bow ties, and those short squiggly corkscrew looking ones that I forgot the name for. Boil your pasta according to your box, and I personally like mine al dente. So now our noodles are cooked and the cheese sauce is ready. Let's mix those together and then put them in an oven safe casserole dish. Use the grated cheese you reserved earlier to generously top the noodles. I probably should have used a bigger dish so that my noodles were nice and flat, but I was too stubborn to switch. I carefully try to pack on as much cheese as I can, ensuring no bald spots are exposed. And for maximum oven safety, I place this dish on a foil-lined baking sheet to catch any cheese spillage. I swear to God, there's more f cheese in there than there is in f Holland. Next, we are going to bake this in the oven at 450 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes or until our top is caramelized and gorgeous. Pull that out of the oven and sprinkle on the prosciutto and green onion. And now that is just a beautiful work of art. This does look a lot like the Hell's Kitchen baked mac and cheese and the taste is magnificent as well as similar. The smokiness from the Gouda truly does add a little something extra to the dish. Anyways, I hope you satisfy your mac and cheese cravings, get your hands dirty, and give this recipe a try. Please be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment what you would like to see on my next recipe video. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time.